Hello my friends and welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to do a comparison between the Placey Challenge X and the Racting 301. The Placey Challenge has been around since 2009 and it wasn't not until 2021 that something actually changed for the design. They added the active fit, but for the rest the structure stayed the same. In 2023 they introduced the Placey Challenge X and, well, I can say that for both the Challenge X as the original play seat, they really are the best foldable and storable solutions out there. Now, it takes a very special uh, seat to dethrone these, uh, these play seats and I have the Racting 301 which promises to be a very good challenger. When we look at the design, well, uh, they are both uh, beach chairs, uh, sort of speak, so we're not going into that. Um, I really like the design of the um, of the Placey Challenge X with the gray and the blue as accent color. It really, it worked out well. Paint also very, very nice, a thick, glossy paint um, with the back uh, backrest with the Logitech uh, logo in it. So I think for design, yeah, I think the Challenge X is really uh, superior to any other foldable solution out there also more superior than the 301 which uses the red as accent color but it's a bit of a safe color because yeah if you look around at the foldable solution it's all red and black uh so a bit of a safe color and yeah it, it's it just the, the the paint also it's not the same quality it's not that glossy like with the um uh, with the Placey Challenge X. So yeah, for design, I really uh, like the Placey Challenge X better. For configuration, the wheelbase holder can be tilted forwards and back with a tilting angle that is almost the same for both. Unfortunately, there is no vertical adaptation possible. When looking at both chairs side by side, the holder of the 301 comes a bit higher than the Placey Challenge X in relation to the seating area. Driving with a very large diameter steering wheel may cause an inconvenience when driving with the 301, while having a low profile wheelbase and steering wheel may cause issues for the Challenge X. Both trays can also be adapted in depth, but here the 301 has the advantage with 6 extra attachment points making it more precisely configurable. The pedal base can be adapted on the fly just like the wheelbase holder. You can easily gain 20 cm in depth on both the chairs. Both use a similar mechanism of plastic bolts to fix holding bars into place. The Challenge X uses some dimples here to lock the bolts better and in theory should prove more fixed than the 301. The holder on the Challenge X can be tilted slightly up or down by playing with the brackets. There is no noticeable inclination possible on the 301. The seating area itself can be adapted with the help of the hubs on the Challenge X and the beach chair mechanism on the 301. You can drive in a more upright or laid back position with both. I don't notice that much of a difference here for available positions. Both chairs also use straps on the back and bottom to regulate the tension of the hammock. The upholstery of the Placey Challenge is made out of active fit. This is a fabric trademark by Placey itself and it helps stop transpiring. This is good when you are driving long stints or when it is a bit hotter outside. Well, yeah, it's logical. It is a very soft, soft fabric. So when you sit in it, it is also very comfortable. I really, really liked this fabric uh, of them uh, and it makes it a bit special. Another thing that I want to add for the seating area is that it is very much inclined here in uh, in the backrest and this gives some issues uh, with certain people that uh, watched my review of it they said that it gave them some neck pain and back pain even uh, with this chair now I didn't experience this myself but I can imagine because there is no adjust uh, adjusting possible that this is an issue so upholstery that they use for the 301 is some sort of um, Alcantara very soft also it is padded when you sit in it also very comfortable the uh, finishing is a bit less uh, than with the Placey Challenge X. You have the nice Logitech logo there. Here, yeah, it is. You can see that it is a bit of lesser quality, but that doesn't mean that it sits uh, bad. On, on the contrary, it sits really soft uh, as it should. The difference here that we have is that the seat itself, it can, uh, the backrest, it can be inclined forwards and back. And this is a bit special, so you can, like do it completely forward or you can do it completely 
backwards and this is handy if you have VR headset on well that you aren't really that much disturbed by the by the top part so this is really a nice innovation that uh, Racting had for the 301 which is really a problem with the Challenge X. The pedals on the Challenge X are bolted into place unlike the classic Challenge. While I like the mechanism as it is really versatile, the minimalistic design which favors brackets over complete pedal plate does give some issues when using it with an overhanging brake. Fixating your pedals without a pedal plate is also not an option. There is some flex noticeable when pushing the brake down as it simply lacks any form of support below it and is completely dependent on the strength of the Fanatec front plate to keep it from flexing. The 301 on the other hand has a more traditional design with a full pedal plate to support the pedals. There is yeah, hardly any flex noticeable. Just make sure to adjust the little front feet to have it balanced out with the floor. The wheelbase holder on both is one of the points that can still use some innovation. Both have a considerable amount of flex to it with the Challenge X scoring marginally better in this area. I get asked quite often if a certain wheelbase with the X Nm will fit on these types of rigs. The answer to that is almost always yes, but with an important connotation. It's the same as with cars, you can put a Porsche motor in a De Chevaux chassis, but you can't expect that it will let you fully enjoy the full experience of driving a Porsche. As best practice, I would not recommend putting on wheelbases with a higher output than yeah, 8 Nm or 10 Nm without any form of adaptation or fortification of the frame. For compatibility, it's a bit weird. If we look at the website of Placeit, uh, for the Placeit Challenge X, it says, it says compatible with all wheelbases and all pedal bases. Um, well, yes and no. So I used in the test, I used the Moza R9 and I used the Fanatec CSL uh, LC pedals. And well, I had some issues um, uh, mounting them on the hardware. The R9 can be bolted on with two bolts instead of yeah four. Uh, it didn't give any issue, but still, yeah, it. If 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 I if I read compatible, I would think that it is um, possible to fix it with uh, with four screws and not just two. For the pedals, the CSL pedals, the same thing. I could attach them with two screws, the front screws, and well, uh, it it just it it. I, I needed to improvise a bit to make it work completely. So um, take it with a grain of salt, the compatibility. It is compatible, so you can mount every wheelbase and uh, pedal base on it. But yeah, it, it's, it will need a bit of tinkering to get it um, op really optimal. When we look at the compatibility for the 301, um, well, they have about every wheelbase out there. Um, a Trustmaster, Logitech, Simmagic, uh, Camus, uh, Moza, everything fits on, on it and with multiple um, uh, bolts also. So I was able to bolt the R9 down with four bolts as it should um, without any, any issue. The pedal base is just the same. For features, well, the 301 is a very, very complete uh, a complete set. You have the shifter holder, you have the nice red um, uh, cable binders uh, which come with it. You have the attachment material for the wheelbases. For the Challenge X, it is a bit of the same thing. So you have the nice uh, cable holders. You have something that looks like a shifter holder, which is included. So for Logitech shifters, it's good. For the rest, it's not that, uh, not, not that good. And, uh, and that is about it. But both I consider complete packages uh, in, yeah, in their own right. Another big feature and one of the most prominent ones why these rigs are bought is a foldability. Both the 301 and the Challenge are set up in under a minute. Both mechanisms are really user friendly and offer enough configurability. The hubs on the Placey Challenge take a little longer to set up, but in all both offer a very similar experience when unfolding the rig. This feature is mainly the reason why I picked the Challenge and Challenge X as my standard for foldable systems. This and the footprint. 
So the footprint is very interesting for this seat. They don't take a lot of space. Uh, and this is really important for me for this type of solution that they don't take a lot of space. When they are uh, folded out, they, they have a length of around 130 centimeter, which is a really very small footprint. But that's not the only footprint that counts. You also have the foldable uh, state, which is important. And well, there there is also a very big difference. In a folded form, the depth of the 301 is a whopping 10 cm less than the Challenge X with its already impressive 44 cm. It is absolutely spectacular how racking made the 301 so space efficient. The width of the rig is 60 cm for the Challenge X without the shifter holder and 74 cm wide for the 301 with the shifter holder attached. In height, both measure around 130 cm. The price for the PlayStation Challenge X is between 270 and 300 euro. It can be ordered on their website or via various retailers. I mean, a lot, a lot of retailers have uh, the PlayStation Challenge X available. When we look at the 301, it is available from the website of uh, Recting and also via Amazon. It is available for 200 euro about. As a conclusion, I think the Recting 301 is a decent competitor when it comes to the standard of foldable and storable rigs. It features certain innovations which are probably still a few years away from being introduced by Playseat on the next iteration of the challenge. The space efficiency and user friendliness are absolutely commendable on this hardware, as is its completeness as a simulated driving cockpit. Granted, the 301 doesn't feel as premium as the Challenge X does, but in exchange for that, it will cost you about a third less. Playseat on the other side is a very strong brand in the community, and with the introduction of the Challenge X, it proved that you can make a decent design even better. The cockpit looks and feels premium from the moment you take it out of the box, and it's backed up by a decent performance. Until this moment, yeah, they had some competition in the likes of uh, Next Level Racing, but never, and this is a very subjective opinion, were they under any pressure when it comes to the core indicators of this category. User friendliness, space efficiency and portability. Like I said in my best cockpit video, in this category there is still a lot that can be innovated and with the Racting 301 Challenger into play, the competition is on. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had something from this video. Please leave a like. If you did subscribe, if you want to see more videos, if you buy new hardware, please use an affiliate link and I will see you all next video. Bye bye.